Yes, good afternoon. Um, this is development studies. We, we are going to look at one of the papers that is examined in development studies, that is paper three. Development studies has three papers, that is paper one, paper two, and paper three. So, but for the purposes of this lesson, we are going to look at paper three, or what we call research. Research actually is out of 50 marks, and uh, it has two sections. Research has uh, two sections. The first section is section A, and uh, section A is predominantly a theory. They ask theoretical questions about research, for example, what are the methods that are used to, to collect data in a research, what are the sampling methods that are used, what are the weaknesses and strengths. That is what we call theory. So in total it has 35 marks. So if learners can have an, a good understanding of questions in theory, then they will not have a problem in research. So after that, then we have section B. Section B is always practical, is out of 15 marks. At the start of section B, there is a statement that is made by the examiner. They say that in your development studies course, you were asked by your teacher to carry out a research on development issue. So the purpose of section B is actually to ask learners to be able to give findings, to give findings on the, on the research that they carried out while they were in school. So the learners then are expected to, to report their findings using graphs, presentation skills, analysis, and conclusion. So however, I stated that uh, many of our learners are struggling to, to do well in section B. So that is the reason why we are here, so that we can then assist you for, for you to be able to understand what are the steps that you need to take for you to have an understanding of uh, of section B, the practical part. So, but um, definitely during the course of the year, you are going to be exposed on how one should go about carrying out a research. With that, I hope that you will not have a problem answering uh, a section B. So let's then start with our first part in research, that is section A, the theoretical, uh, the theoretical part. Um, these are the steps. These are the steps that learners need to follow for them to draft a research proposal or their research uh, report. Remember that when you are going to be asked to carry out a research, you are going to make what we call a research plan or research proposal, and after that, you are then going to be required to give feedback or to give a report on the findings that you made. So these are then the steps that one need to follow for them to be able to do a proposal or to give a research report. Very important, number one, is uh, each learner must be able to select a topic identify a topic but this topic should be related to development studies so we used to see many learners during exams they are being asked to give a feedback to give feedback on the research that they did instead of them giving a topic related to development studies they write something about other i mean that are taught in other subjects so they will talk about river studies pedestrian accounts, no, no, we are only talking about, here, we are only talking about topics in development studies. So very important, your topic that you should identify should be very interesting, it must be very important, it must be researchable, it must be short and straight to the point. And then, this topic must be limited to a particular area. For example, you cannot give a broad topic and say, we are talking about teenage pregnancy, in Namibia. That is too broad. We are discouraging learners to give broad topics. Your, stop, your, your topic must be specified to a limited area. For example, teenage pregnancy or the rise of teenage pregnancy in schools, maybe in Kavango East, but Kavango East is still broad, you can say in Kehemu maybe, or in schools in Rundu Second. That is at least you are limiting it to, to a smaller area. That is very important. However, you are also told, you are warned not to select topics that are sensitive. Your topic must not be sensitive. 
and uh, it must be related to development studies as I said it earlier so the next point is you have to formulate your research question and all hypothesis that is very important so all learners must have an understanding of what a research question and their hypothesis is so it's optional in section B you are going to understand the examiner might require you to either give your research question or a hypothesis so what we are trying to say is that our learners must be able to have an understanding of both you must understand what a research and question uh, what a research question is and what a hypothesis is so whatever is going to be asked by the examiner then you'll be in a better position to to answer these questions so a research question as you can see is a broad question about your investigation that must be answered when carrying out a research for example our topic i'm going to make use of uh, teenage pregnancy as an example why is teenage pregnancy on the rise in uh, among teenagers in 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 in, in rundu or we can say in kehemu why teenage pregnancy is high in kehemu in rundu or we can say in rundu in sawyema or wherever so that is what we call a research question there must be a question mark at the end because it's a question so a research question is a question a hypothesis is a statement so let's look at what a hypothesis is so you must never put your hypothesis in a form of a question because a hypothesis is a statement so a hypothesis is actually a prediction that you make about something that you believe to be true it's a, you make a statement but that statement should make a prediction of what you believe to be true about the topic that you are researching on so when you make a statement or a hypothesis you actually do not have evidence to prove that this hypothesis is correct or wrong so the hypothesis then will be cor will be proven to be correct or wrong after you are going to carry out your your research for example drug abuse among teenagers is the main reason why uh, teenage pregnancy is on the rise in rundu so you are making a statement you are predicting that according to you the reason why teenage pregnancy is high in rundu is because our teenagers are abusing uh, uh, drugs so you are just predicting it does not mean that that is the truth there are other reasons at the end of the research you might discover that there are also other reasons that are contributing to the rise or to the high numbers of teenage pregnancy so as i said a hypothesis is a statement which predicts about something that you believe in but then what you believe in must be proved to be correct or wrong by the research that you are going to to carry out so each and every learner is expected to have an understanding of what a hypothesis is because it's actually asked optionally you can go for a hypothesis or a research question point number three is what we call research aims or objectives this is very much important as a researcher you must have reasons why you are carrying out a research you cannot just carry out a research without you having objectives you must have reasons for carrying out a research so the reasons why you are carrying out a research is what we call research aims or objectives so this is very important i want you to pay attention to the following your research aim or objectives must be in a form of a statement for example my aim is to find out to discover to investigate to experiment to find out the reasons why teenage pregnancy is very high is so high in rumbo to find out the solution the solutions to teenage pregnancy uh, in rundu or to discover or to uncover uh, the negative effects of teenage pregnancy